Greetings. My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks Sr., your host, and this is Community Focus. We're very fortunate to have with us uh, Brother Willie Brooks, um, no kin. Uh, he's a community activist, uh, and also he's an elder ordained by God. Brother Willie, we're very happy that you're taking time for your busy schedule to be with us again to enlighten Lake County about your community activism. You know, Lake County is approximately uh, 750,000 to 800,000. I don't know how many up at 5 o'clock this morning listen to the program, but I understand we have a pretty good audience, you know, to listening. But, Brother Willing, we have a lot of problems in the country now, and mainly dealing with the uh, police um, versus, um, you know, minorities. The police have been accused of being executioners you know, instead of uh, just um, placing people in custody. But I'd I like for you to explain here, why don't we have respect for one another? I know that we have to have respect for ourselves, but in order to cut down on the problems, you know, in the country, we have to respect one another. I may mention that on Saturday, May the 9th, from 9 until 1, I have a cultural diversity um, forum at the College of Lake County in the lower level from 9 until 1. And we are inviting everyone to attend, and maybe we can uh, together uh, discuss, um, would be all races together, what is the problem? Why don't we have respect for one another? Okay, the first question would be, what is cultural diversity? We have to define it, what it is, and then we're going to discuss how important it is to have cultural diversity within a workforce or in organizations. Uh, so we may want to start off by, um, as a community activist, what is your take on Respect for one another. <clears throat> Good morning, Mr. Brooks. I'm glad to be here today. Uh, and, and that's a subject that's going around the world to some people. Mm -hmm. uh, we live in uh, America now where we have no respect for no one. We mm -hmm. have respect for the president's office. We talk about the president like we talk about a resident uh, alcoholic on the corner. Mm -hmm. We talk back to him. We talk back to our parents. We live in a new America. We live in a new society where everything goes. Uh, we used to have respect for one another. We have no respect for one another. When you don't respect the president of the United States, <laughs> okay. no matter what color or his position, you don't respect the pastors no more or people of leadership in the community. Respect level now, the youth right now have no respect because we don't talk respect about anyone. I talk about a pastor. I talk about the police. I talk about the mayor openly, mm -hmm. openly in front of my children. So they grew up with no respect for authority. The man have left the house white and black has left the house, divorce rate is sky high, so many men, young boys are being reared, being reared by a woman, and they have no authority figure in the house who bring authority from the cell, from the part of a male being authority, the voice of a male. So it's been years and years coming. Now we see it right at the head. The mm -hmm. Rebellious children have raised up. Rebellious people have raised up. We have brought every culture in America that come from other nations, where they've been rebellious over in other nations, have wars and wars in many nations. they all in a melting, melting pot. When you open our gates and brought everything in, once you're here, you become American. You can do whatever you want. Whatever you're doing over there, killing people, raping people, and they're running from something. They bring that same spirit into America. Brother Willie, we have the leaders of our country, uh, congressmen as well as senators, not respecting uh, the president of the United States, the highest level. The president gets more respect from leaders of other countries 
in, he does in his own country. Now, Dem- something Democrats, wrong with that picture. No, Democrats do not respect Democrats. They don't respect Republicans. We elect people to Congress. They can't get nothing done because they're on one agenda. Like one world order. They're on one agenda. The party's agenda. They, they care nothing about the local people. So we elect somebody, a Republican, from this region, and when they go going to the, uh, Congress, and they try, they don't fight for us. They fight the Republican agenda. Or they get a Democrat, they try a Democrat. So we have no movement in America because no one respects. The people that they come to sit down at the table and compromise and bring out a deal. We have youth of yesterday and youth of today, and we I mention that because uh, youth of yesterday, if, uh, it was a family deal in a community. Um, uh, if you got out of line, the next door neighbor would uh, give you a spanking or chastise you, and when the parents come home, you get another one when they <laughs> come home. But you don't have that now because. The laws play a part. Uh, you, you. I think uh, that was a football player in Minnesota. Yeah, Vikings. Adrian, Adrian uh, Peterson. Yeah, he was his kid, switch. and uh, he ended up getting kicked out of football and everything. He let him back in. But I'm saying here, the law has changed, mm-hmm. and the kids know the law. You can't talk. Uh, you can't even talk to your kids rough. They say they call it a uh, verbal abuse. Okay. You've been in verbal. I'm gonna whoop you when you get home. I'm gonna beat you. And you've been verbal. And the boy tell he tell the teacher they come and arrest you for verbal abuse to your child. Mm-hmm, so they mm-hmm. taken always taking authority out because they want all the authority. You go to jail, they talk to you like you're a fool. Your, your son don't do what you say, but then you get in jail, they talk to him like he's a slave. So we don't have uh, the family structure anymore. We don't have the, you mentioned about the the father in the home. We don't have the father in the home anymore. We not only don't have the father in the home, we don't have strong mothers. Mothers are trying to work two jobs, or they really never been mothers themselves. Like young women never been mothers themselves. Like you said, community no longer care about a single mother no more. The church no longer care about single women. It's mm-hmm. marriage ministry. All ministries geared to to unity is nothing geared to single people. All men, we live in another world than we did 10, 20, seven years ago it was another world. When Obama, President Obama got elected eight years ago, it was another world. We live in another world no more with no values, no <laughs> values, okay. and no respect. We live right now, there's no wall, nowhere. We used to hold back sin. It's okay for two men to get married, it's okay for two women. So now marijuana men, and when I grew up, marijuana gave you 20 years uh, in jail. Now marijuana is a $20 billion business. And now they, yesterday they say legalizing in, in Chicago, well, you're just smoking a joint, they're going to let you go. They, they're not going to get you small amounts of weed. So now what was bad when I was growing up, marijuana, marijuana and maybe alcohol was born was bad when you was growing up because they had bootleggers. Yeah. And they made that legal, found a way to tax it and got legal. Then the marijuana was wrong. Now they found a way to tax it. Now it's a $20 billion a year starting out, $20 billion, billion dollar, uh, uh, business in America. Mm-hmm. Every state is legalizing marijuana because they have found a way to tax it. And they got people who didn't smoke now coming in, the same system, coming in and making a, 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 coming in and making a, a commodity of it. Now, mm-hmm. now it's, it's going to be traded on the stock market. Marijuana. Well, you should be illegal. That would kill you, get paranoid and all that. But now it's a, it's a $20 billion business. So now we say, what happened to the children? We got mm-hmm. lost. We lost the children. When the generation shifted, they, it got rid of a lot of people because now if you're not a skilled worker or they don't see no future in you, when you're about the eighth, the fourth grade, they put you in a charter school. They take you out of the regular school. They see a potential in you by third or fourth grade. And they'll take you out of the regular school and put you in a special school for kids who want to learn. And, and then you're good, but your sister, who may have been in school and she's slow, they'll take her and leave her there because no use for her is going to be somebody's, uh, somebody's girlfriend and have babies or she be no use. To society, so it's, it's and we ain't got to the have and the have nots. The haves right now don't care what about kids killing kids. Mm-hmm. I travel a lot. I just came back from Florida, and nobody worrying about the killing because all these people mostly uh, they care about one thing: enjoying their family in a safe atmosphere. They have nothing to do. They have they don't go about nowhere. Um, I don't. They don't go in areas where their kids finna get shot. They, their kids not gonna be staying in the alley at night. They're not going to be in the area where they're going to be, where danger is. I know it could be anywhere, but they don't go places that we go. So who care about it? Right now, you just seen the ship uh, fall, uh, 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 
turn over in the, in the ocean over there coming up out of Libya. All them people have been coming to Europe and America for years. Now, they infiltrated America right now. We got more foreigners in America probably than homegrown Americans. Mm-hmm. So do they care about the black, whites killing blacks or blacks killing blacks? No, because they came over. I was down in Florida. Most of them working two jobs. Most of them working two jobs and they still have. They got one thing when they running from what it was, when they wipe out a whole village and a whole town, they're running from it. And they get here and look at us and say, why are they still and stand on the corner because it, right here in America they gave us inferior education. They fattened us. McDonald came out there the month and say, uh, I've been feeding y'all wrong food, blowing y'all up. I'm gonna start getting y'all healthy food. So they've been playing all kinds of tricks with our kids and with us as a culture, mm-hmm. giving us the wrong diet and everything. So we now why are we angry? We angry because now we're being left behind in another country of people, another America that they bring into America from out of America, and they t- getting our job, they're getting our land, they t- putting us out of neighborhood, they're the value property in Chicago on the south side they run them out let them kill each other now they kill them they get them out for the land is valuable in Asia they can't they can't breathe the air is no good the water is no good but we got an America they come over here and be king they own stores and all our neighborhood other people from other nations mm-hmm. own stores and Jeremiah 5 they talk about in the Bible talk about other people will come to your nation speak in other language and be your and, and feed you food and knowledge uh, and your name they'll do business in your and they, you don't even know what they talk about. We there right now. So our kids right now have no hope. Our kids don't see 30, 40, 50 years. All they see is the next day. They don't They don't expect to live to be 25 or 30. They don't even see what we see. Me and you have seen some stuff. They live in another world where they only think about right now. No hope. You Why know, you? you mentioned about um, uh, people from overseas come in this country. Yeah. We have uh, even people from uh, from Africa come to this country, they are more educated than the ones that are in this country. They're well, finding this out. Well, if you go look around, I read an article. I had the article in Detroit. They want to restock Detroit with uh, foreign people from foreign countries and mm. give them special visas for their family because they're more skilled people and they, they got a record of opening business and the business to be successful. Okay. They're not getting us because they didn't teach us nothing. They left us lazy, thought that welfare system going to last forever. But now we find out they don't need Af- regular Afro-Americans. Africans have nothing to do with Afro-Americans. Yeah. They come here, I travel all the time, they work at all the, they work at the baggage handler, they, they work in all the hotels, they work, they're yeah. Africans. Some of them from South Africa, come from Africa, Nigeria, they all here driving cabs, they're doing, we sitting home waiting on our check and talking about the people didn't give us enough and we want, we want something to restore us from, from my grandfather worked the cotton field. This new America is high tech. They know nothing about no cotton field. They know about you have a skill to work in this new field, you no know, matter what color it's called, the have and the have nots. So what do we do with a, a billion people we got running around here? We, they're going to be extinct. They kill us off with abortion. They give us our, our young girls abortion. They, they, they incarcerating our young men and they're they making them come out homosexual or don't come out at all. They're taking our young lives away. So pretty soon we're going to be like the American Indian. You'll see one here, and you'll see another one about 10 miles later. What happened? A stink genocide in a whole generation of people, and we let so-called black leaders get paid to let it happen. Okay, in America. You, you mentioned about black leaders. Yeah. Let's, let's go right with let's it. With uh, what about the, the pastors that used to be leaders in the South, uh, but now they, they're not visible here in the North? We can't have a leader. When you get in the bed with the enemy, you no longer can lead. We all join one party, Democratic Party. We can't say nothing about the Gen- Democratic Party. Otherwise, you get excluded. Mm-hmm. So you're no longer a pastor once you join the party. I can't join the lodge. They say, most pastors say, no, you can't be a, in the lodge because we don't believe in it, but you'll join the Democratic Party who believe in abortion and everything else. They come against the lodge. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I ain't having that lodge. You ain't having that lodge meeting in my church. But how about the Democratic Party? They genocide, the Democrats the genocide, and gave us nothing but crumbs. They give everybody else something. They give us a crumb around election time. They need us. They come and shout and jump and argue. But during the other part, they give us nothing. They give us nothing. We ask for nothing. We give us nothing because we're already committed to the Democratic Party. You, but you know what I'm saying? You so, don't see the politician they, except during election time? You don't see him the next two he, years he, he or four years? He only come around to get our vote. And get we we have to live with it for the and for then the, the pastor tell you to vote for him. He gonna do a good job for you. But when you look around, there's no schools, bad schools. You look around, it's poor housing. You look around, there's no store in the community. But he's gonna do a good job for because he's my buddy, the Democrat. How can you be a buddy with the enemy if you're a pastor of Jesus Christ of the Church of Jesus Christ? 
That's all I'm saying. Either you is or you ain't. They tell you don't join the lodge, don't join the Masons. Yeah, yeah. They tell you get mad, but you mention Mason. You don't get in the Mason. Mason, you say you that ain't of God. Well, Democrat ain't of God. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. You, we can't say nothing because you can't put your mouth on the pastor. <laughs> okay. You know how they use that scripture. Right. Watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. But now, wait a minute. Watch what you just did. You went into a, uh, you went into an organization that believe in abortion, believe in homosexual rights, and believe in everything that the Bible say is wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong. The Bible you preach and everything you say wrong. You join the club. We mentioned about youth not being in the church. How can we draw youth out of the community into a church? Preach a new gospel. Preach the gospel. Preach the gospel they understand. They don't understand the old gospel, me and you. We had parents to take us to Sunday school. He said they, they, they'll be drawn by a preacher. Okay. They'll be drawn by a preach. Preach Jesus in a, in a terminology that they understand. They don't understand uh, these thou, thou, but they understand mm-hmm. God ain't forgot you. He didn't forget you. He's coming back to get you. He didn't forget. We, he, he, you bring the terminology of the Bible into the 21st century. Mm-hmm. We're still playing church like my grandma, and she was ignorant because she didn't, wasn't able to go to school, couldn't have the right X on her thing. Them people, now we're preaching the same way, preaching man instead of preaching Jesus. And the kids ain't going for it. I've been going to church in Chicago, down in Chicago. Three, four thousand people, young people, come to church every Sunday, four times on Sunday, to hear one man preach Jesus in the 21st century Jesus. He ain't asking for money. He preaching Jesus. Why do we have a high rate of crime in Chicago? You you box them in. You don't give them no jobs. It no it's jobs all around Chicago, but none in the city. They don't have no transportation. Cost five dollars to ride the bus. You only pay a minimum wage. Then you go out. You come back in. I mean, I mean, how you live on the five dollars? You go out and work in the suburbs. You come back in. You have no transportation. Get out there. You spend all your money on transportation. Speaking of transportation, you didn't, you, you didn't teach them nothing. You have an outlet. Um, uh, a week ago, you had three busloads of people going down to see Tyler Perry, and then that was dinner afterwards. Well, now, that was an outlet for the people here to go down to Chicago. Well, so many people, Mr. Brooks, that came to my heart 13 years ago. So many people in Lake County, one of the richest county where, don't be uh, not able to go anywhere. Okay. We in the area of Chicago, so much going on in Chicago, but we have no outlet. Nobody, if the church take you, you want to go to the church. People just want to go out and enjoy. Don't church me every day. Let me go out and just enjoy myself. Grandkids don't take the grandparents out. People are locked in. Seeing women, if they go out with a man, they think he's about to have sex with them. Somebody just want to go out and enjoy the pressure of life. Life's pressure. So much going on in the world. So much on the news. So mm-hmm. much on the job. Hits you so hard. And we made in God's image. And he said, I'm relieving the pressure. On the sixth day, I thought about you. I made man on the sixth day. Now I'm going to give you relief and take you somewhere where you can laugh. Let your grandkids go. Let all the thoughts of the earth. Wars, rumors of wars, everywhere. But then they get to go somewhere and just laugh. Be yourself. And that's what the trip is about. The disabled, the youth, or anyone can go. Because I know one thing. Everybody got pressure. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, you got to relieve the pressure to find out what you, who you are, because you get so much pressure. You let a demon come on your outside, sleep with him, call him your husband. He wasn't even your husband. Pressure. Release of pressure is laughter. And we forget about laughter. We show stone-faced at church people. We forget about laughter. God gave us a spirit of laughter. And that's what I try to do. What, what should the church be doing? I, I know in the, in the book of Matthew twenty nineteen it said, Go therefore... And teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Now, we should also leave Jerusalem and go to Judea and the uttermost parts of the earth to do it. Not in that building, yeah. a church. Right? Well, we, we should leave that building. Yeah, but we, go. We, the church is you every day. What you and I are doing right now is the church. Okay. We godly men doing godly things for the community. The pastors nowadays, most of them, are just... Uh, Paid hit men. They come in on Sunday, they hit you with a word, and they go back and play golf. Most of them all go play mm-hmm. golf in the morning. Yeah, I can see it because I, I, I owe you nothing. Yeah, most of them just go, you can't call them and say, I'm sick. Uh, I'm going to send somebody from the church. You can't call them and say, I got a need. Then you put, you shouldn't be needing because uh, you, you make enough money not to be needing. What you must be doing something wrong. They, they criticize everything you're doing, but they keep getting your money. So we don't put our name on men and keep getting their name off Jesus Christ, who is, the, who is our she- true shepherd. Mm-hmm. We we let me we don't put his, other names before him because man will let you down. You'll mm-hmm. call a man in the middle of the night, say, man. I ain't getting up and go, go come nowhere. But if I call Jesus in the middle of the night, he's coming to my rescue. 
Mm-hmm. And we took church and made church men churches. But I'm trying to say the real church is getting back to Jesus. In the church now, we have uh, uh, pastor's birthday and we have anniversaries. Everything, every, everything and, leads and, to him. Everything, but see, they they used that scripture, but they wasn't paying the pastors back there when you celebrate them. They was really working. They you wasn't paying. You ain't get a hundred thousand dollars a year, plus you give him another hundred thousand by yeah. giving him a gift through his wife's day, your day, everybody day. So now you give him what? The, instead of just going to the government getting money for our community, we should stop giving these pastors money and sit celebrate man because he's getting a salary. Then every yeah, time yeah. you look around, they use these scriptures that we got to celebrate the honor them. Yeah, okay, cut his salary, and now we honor him, and then we'll make up the rest of his salary. Mm-hmm. Because right now he's getting double pay, or oh, double pay, double honor. All right. But bottom line is, he living good and all. And then if you leave the church, they, t- they don't even talk to you no more. Okay. You put all that money in the man, and then the man say, don't talk to him no more. And now you become isolated, but you gave all your money. I know one of your church, a whole family, a family I'd seen, and they said, hey, mama was in that church for years, mm-hmm. put all the money in church. And then when she died, she couldn't be, they couldn't have a funeral in church, because I guess she had left the church or something. And they say, you can't have your mama funeral here. Well, how can you not? She put all the money to get the church built, then they turn away and on deathbed and say, hey, look at you, you wasn't here the day you died. So we have to really have to go back to oh, Proverbs, yeah, uh, yeah, 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 train yeah. up a child. Yeah. We we got to go back that way. But who trained them? Kids raising kids ain't no, it's chaos all in the community. Mm-hmm. The school room is like a, a babysitting class. Everybody hollering, screaming. There's nobody no order because kid got to find order at home. He can't find it in school. Kid got to find order at home. He can't find order in school. Cause you got kids from different backgrounds coming to school, and they get, and the teacher one teacher got to keep order up. So how she teach? And first you the kid ain't hungry, he acting crazy in the morning, and the teacher trying to teach him one hungry, he making noise, and other one trying to learn. So way is how you train them. Now you got uh, I think one school in Lake County, and uh, maybe others too. They have a uh, child care in the school. In the school, and I, I noticed that uh, uh, in one high school, as a young lady had two babies when she graduated. Two. Uh, well, I'm saying we're in a new world. We're in a new world. We're in a new world. But you got to teach them. See, the law say you got to teach them because it's money. And most of them just, you got to show up. You got to show up. They make noise all day. They stop my kid from learning. But they make noise all day. They got to come because every person is a dollar. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You can't, you, they got to come. Okay. They don't, they don't put them out. They don't go. We don't have no truancy officer no more. Walk around and, and make sure you go to school. The, the kid got to come because the school got to make money by him coming. They don't care. As long as he show up, they made money. Yeah. He become a money machine. Nobody wanted the kid after, once he, uh, after he played twilight sports. Guys I've seen play basketball in Lake County. Awesome boys play. Okay. They had no future. And after after they beat, after 12th grade, you see them walking around the street doing nothing. But their name was big in basketball. We lift them up. When they valuable to it, once they value go down, he graduate. Hey, he used to play. He took it to third in state. He did this, but... Time is gone. So he's a candidate for, for incarceration, right? And that brings on another program within itself about incarceration. They, they breed them for incarceration. Because you know, they're privatized. The prisons are privatized. You don't teach me that way, I'm going to be an animal. <laughs> you don't teach me how to fish, I'm going to snatch your fish. You know, you got to teach. You can't give them a fish. Teach them how to fish. They're not, the schools are not teaching. Community is not teaching. Churches is not being church. Churches are being social, uh, social, uh, social doing social yeah. service more than giving out government cheese and they're giving out uh, clothes that the government gave. And they're being a door for government and not doing it their own. So they take, you can't give cheese away in the church with, uh, with, a, with, a, with a Bible in your hand. It's against the law to give, have a food pantry with a Bible. Mm-hmm. So it's against the law to talk about your church at the food pantry door. It's got rules on the wall. Can't do it. So once they accept government money in the food pantry, they no longer can preach Jesus. Mm. It's an easy way to come in and take take the church and take Jesus out. So that's why gangs um, attract the youth uh, in the church. They show them love. Oh, okay. Most kids show them love. Most kids don't have a daddy. I've never seen a daddy hug a mama. Seen a man hug a mama. But he he gonna leave in the morning. They never seen a man hug their mama, and the kid want you. He want a, some man to hug yeah, him. Yeah. He still want a man to hug him. It, it's his it's his nature to have a man hug him. It's nature to have love. The mama just she just throw him eat 
eat the pancakes in the morning. I made them see her. She have no love for every, no, hey, honey, you a nice boy. You're going to be a grown-up man. She never, she don't ever stroke him with love. You mm-hmm. got to stroke love on him. And we haven't seen that in the community. All we're doing, now, right now, we hollering and screaming about death. White man, this white man. But dude, when we get out of hollering and screaming, we got to go buy cheese from a white man or a rap. When we get through hollering and marching these lines, we got to go buy a cold pop. Not from nobody black owned. We have no ownership. Okay. Blacks own nothing. You can't all have a kingdom without ownership. You can't run a kingdom without nobody owning nothing. Not even in a whole country, we don't have a black owned chain uh, groceries. We don't, in any community you go on, you have Arab people running stores. We have nothing that black called church people will not own nothing. We talking about a kingdom when we get, it's a kingdom in heaven. Well, we ain't made a kingdom on earth because we got to support our own. We got to own some. Another kingdom will not come here and talk to a poor kingdom. You talk, every man got a big town, bishop, bishop, doctor, doctor, but he don't have no kingdom because his people don't own nothing. He a slave mentality king. Mm. What is man's, briefly, man's purpose on earth? To reproduce. To reproduce. To reproduce. Till the land. He yeah, wo- yeah. To work. Yeah, to work. He's, he's here to work. Yeah, right? and reproduce. That's what we got to see. We reproduce. Well, that's what Whatever I'm, I'm reproducing, it should be me. You, me. My son should be doing what I'm doing right now, talking to you as a community leader. I should reproduce my own kind. He mm-hmm. should be doing what I'm doing, talking to you. Mm-hmm. But they want to do their own thing and, and do a whole other thing, but they, they, they really was made to do what I'm doing. I'm just a forerunner and for the, my son. And the, the, women, the women's role is to be carrying the seed and be nature the seed, and the man is the one that's supposed to lead the house and lead, uh, lead the community. So man has the dominant uh, well, we got seed, in Lake right? County, we got women running Lake County. All women, and women, women, leadership position in Lake County, all women are weak men. Well, what about the woman trying to be, uh, striving to be president of the United States? Can yeah, you imagine? I mean, I mean, what's the difference? We're going to vote for her, whatever she, whatever she did, we're going to vote for her because that's what we got to do. All the black parents are going to get behind her. If she done killed people, do whatever. She made all kinds of deals. They got a foundation, and she made deals with everybody around the country, around the world, and we don't know what she but we said we love Hillary. What was so good about Hillary? Because the system tells us we got to vote for Hillary because we're black. We're not free. We, we, we still slaves. We only vote what the system tells you to vote. In 2015, we're still slaves doing what dictating when somebody tells you to vote. You don't, and we got all the information to research anybody, but we still slaves in America, and, and the Negro of Afro America is yeah. still slave in 2015 in Lake County and the rest of America. You mean to tell me, Elder uh, uh, Brooks, that this is modern day slavery now? Modern day slavery, killing our kids, making a prison system, put them in camp, boot camp, and prison, prison our kids, taking the mind of a, of the man and making him and have him vote one way. That's called slavery because you're still not free to vote who you want to be. You have a community say you got to vote Democrat, but these are the best people for us, and they put that pressure on you. And if you do anything else, they say you are uh, uh, you Uncle Tom. If you vote any way, use your own man. You you out. Of order. If you use your own mind, you out of order. If you say something about your church that ain't go along with the rest of black church, you out. You are just you are a rebellious pastor. You rebel your father. You are a rebellious leader. If you don't go along with systems, so we've gotten away from the Ten Commandments. Then it's no Tenth Commandment in that black community. It's do as I say, do. Wow! 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 Tell me the difference. We kill each other. We go with each other wild. We don't honor each other. We don't do none of that. So what one we use? Which one we we don't love one another? You mm-hmm. see me put three buses. They hate me for putting three buses. All I was doing, obey God. Okay. The ones on the outside hate me. Oh, well, I'm trying to bring up my background. Try to bring up everything. They discourage people from me. We're supposed to love and encourage. What happened to the word of God? We're looking at men who, who forgot the word of God. When they get $10, they go play golf with people who ain't saved. And they got one on the golf course. People don't play out there for nothing. So that uh, we can wind up now and say we're uh, supposed to be respecting one another, but yeah. we don't respect ourselves. We don't respect ourselves. Women walk around like whores, mothers, half their breasts gone. It's, it's, it's what we do now. We don't expect to look like a married woman, dress all up her back. 
wearing clothes four times smaller, men trying to be young, taking Viagra and, and all kinds of stuff, trying to stay young. So we living outside now. It's me and mine, and get away from me. Ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, had another forum, part three, four. I'm not sure how many that we've had. And we hope that this will become a better community, better county, better state, better country as a result of learning how to respect one another. We have had uh, Brother Willie Brooks uh, outlining uh, not only the problems, but solutions that to make this world a better place. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening to another awareness session on Community Focus. My name is Dr. Waddell Brooks, Sr., your host. Sr., your host.